Hi, welcome to CIDC Nirman. I'm Jayashree Kurup. I'm editor CIDC Nirman and I have with me Garima Bansal. She's a structural consultant, a structural engineer and she's with Tata Consulting Engineers Limited. Thank you so much for joining us, Garima. Thank you, Jayashree. Uh, first of all, you got an award at the CIDC Vishwakarma Awards, right? Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you so much. Tell us what the, uh, cons uh, the award was for and what was your application for? Okay, so I had um, applied under category D, mm. uh, which is an uh, achievers award in the field of uh, scientist, innovator or structural consultant. So uh, I have been working uh, as a, I'm a structural engineer and I've been working as a structural uh, consultant with Tata Consulting Engineer since last 12 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have been very fortunate uh, to be associated with a um, few of uh, big nation building projects uh, like high speed rail, uh, Ram Mandir Ayodhya, mm -hmm. uh, Statue of Unity. Uh, I have been associated with the uh, uh, development of gift city since last 10 years and so. Mm -hmm. So I have been working and contributing towards this uh, big project as a structural consultant and uh, I'm really thankful to CIDC for uh, recognizing me uh, for this award. Garima, if you look at the industry as a whole, we, uh, wherever we see any kind of disasters or malfunction, it's normally pinned on the structural consultant, right? Or the lack of uh, a good structural consultant. Tell us how important is structural consultant to the project itself and its longevity? So, uh, Structural consultants are the backbone of any of uh, civil projects, right. any civil projects, you name it. Uh, architects envision the project, they decide how the project will look like, uh, but it's a structural con consultant who adds the life into the project. So uh, of course they are, they are very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, with regard to disasters that are happening and uh, the structural consultants uh, or the designers come always in the forefront uh, because it's a great responsibility uh, as a structural consultant because what we are dealing with is the life of many people. Mm -hmm. When we are designing a structure, that structure is going to be either inhabited by the many people or that infrastructure is going to be used by millions of people. Sure. So if something happens to that structure, you know, uh, we as a structural consultants have a huge responsibilities on our shoulders and it's very obvious that if something goes wrong with the structure, the creators are brought into a question. Not necessarily they are at fault, yeah. but of course, I mean, uh, since they are the main person who are involved yeah. into, they are always, uh, you know, bring into limelight and questioned about it. As the uh, complexity of our uh, engineering projects grows, uh, do we need more structural consultants and do you think we have adequate training for structural consultancy? Yeah, we have uh, enough trainings like we we have good engineering colleges. We have one of the you know few of the best uh, engineering colleges globally, worldwide. We have IITs, NITs, uh, which are churning out civil engineers uh, uh, every year. So uh, training-wise, I don't think there is any lacuna in uh, you know uh, producing a good uh, uh, structural consultant as such in India. The problem is. Uh, how attractive you make the core engineering because today you see most of the engineer stands to move towards IT as a field you know or the FSI yeah <laughs> during the placements uh, yes. there are very few uh, you know consultants uh, or engineers want to get into core engineering whether it is mechanical or civil even is uh, further less yeah. so uh, it is very important that um, our, our government uh, and the industry itself uh, recognize the importance and uh, potential of the engineers. Like I said, they are the backbone of the structures. Yeah. So uh, generally, you know, uh, the lot of limelight goes towards the contractors who are actually doing the building, whether, you know, yeah. but uh, the designers are the ones who are making that uh, structure Absolutely. to come alive, right? So uh, it is very important that you make this career also very lucrative in terms of offering the you know similar kind of remunerations and packages so that you get more of course engineers getting into this field right in mm -hmm. fact uh, one of the things that said is that uh, you know uh, infrastructure construction is often away from large uh, cities and you know core areas and uh, there is a lot of work on the site and it's not as uh, made as attractive 
as maybe sitting in air-conditioned offices and working. Do you agree? Um, I mean, you're somebody who has specialized in yeah. it and ex excelled in it. So I would slightly disagree. Uh, reason being, we have both greenfield and brownfield projects. Also, given that so much development is going in the cities, metro cities, and now you see all tier one, uh, tier two, tier three cities are also, you know, the major chunk of development is having those cities. So there are projects which happens, you know, away from the cities, but then you have a lot of development happening in cities as well. Mm -hmm. So having said that, um, so there are designers who work from office, and there are engineers who are deployed on site. Mm -hmm. The skill set required by the two. I would not say it's very different, but then the expertise in designing is more by the designers who are sitting in the office uh -huh. and the kind of expertise that is required from the construction point is uh, slightly different. Yeah. So uh, I would not like to like get into that uh, it is difficult because you are deployed on site because uh -huh. if you want to become a structural engineer or designer, you can still contribute a lot towards designing sure. uh, from sitting from the office. So if you see all kind of big structures like I guess a Statue of Unity or Burj Khalifa or any kind of uh, uh, high-rise structures or big infrastructures you talk about, they get they do get designed in Absolutely. in office, and then you have a team that execute it on site. Right, right. Yeah. And uh, globally, the structural engineers proudly uh, declare that I designed this building or I was involved in this. Of building, course, right? I, mean, I yeah, it's <laughs> a very proud moment for us when yeah. we s when we design on the drawings mm -hmm. on the paper and when we see it in. Uh, on site in front of our eyes that when the structure comes up so it, yeah it, it feels really proud about it yeah do you think there's more awareness building among students uh, that is required so that more people come into this sector especially mm. the engineering students so like i said uh, before uh, awareness in the terms uh, so right a lot of opportunities have to be created in this field like i said right mm -hmm. So uh, there are people who get in, so there are students who get into civil engineering, mm. mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, few by choice, few because, because that was a leftover skill. Yeah, <laughs> right, they don't have that ranking yeah. in the yeah. college. But uh, whatever they get into, m many of them tends to, you know, get towards IT and other fields. Yeah. So uh, opportunities in the whole industry has to be created in such a uh, way that you encourage engineers to go into the uh, this core engineering yeah. field and contribute yeah. towards yeah. it yeah. awareness i think awareness is there but uh, i think because that awareness is there uh, people like students tend to uh, move from uh, far away from the you know oh. core engineering yeah. talk about yourself what drives you uh, being a structural engineer what are the uh, the aspects of it that give you a high so i'm extremely passionate about the work i do uh, and very proud to be uh, associated with Tata Group. Uh, the kind of uh, value that Tata Group adds into each and everything that we work, uh, that inspires me a lot. Uh -huh. And uh, especially, you know, uh, being part of Tata Consulting Engineers, the kind of uh, ethics, the kind of ethos with, with which we work, uh -huh. because it's very important. Uh, it's a very dynamic industry to talk about, you know. So the things are very different uh, when you are at site and when you are at. Uh, so, if if a contractor is designing and building uh, on site, and what we do, it's it's because there's a lot of cost uh, yeah. and money involved. Right. So there are a lot of dynamics in this field, but uh, the kind of uh, ethics that uh, we work with. Uh, and uh, which has come from our senior leadership from Tata Group and from especially from Mr. Ratan Tata whom I consider my mentor. Uh -huh. uh, it inspires me a lot to uh, put my 100% into the work that I do and with lot of integrity and passion uh, f keeping the fact in mind that uh, the structure that I'm going to design is has to stay there for a long for the period it is going to be designed for yeah. and it has to be sustainable because it's very very important that we bring that sustainability uh, you know in our design mm. uh, so there was a lot of talk about griha igbc you know platinum golden rating and uh, and uh, such things and how construction industry can incorporate sustainability in their design so that is what you do at site but it's 
it's equally important to make your design in such a way that uh, you contribute let's towards the you know carbon emissions and make your project more green buildings more sustainable and uh, building towards a sustainable um, business is one of the uh, if you know a uh, business strategy of tata group mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know yeah so uh, that's what inspires me to work towards yeah wonderful i hope a lot of youngsters are listening to you and will take up the kajuns for uh, structural so. engineering i hope so as well and may your tribe increase thank you so thank much thank you so much <laughs> thank you